Hi folks, I'm Richard Friedman, and welcome to my Trump cartoon countdown for December 8th, 2020. This is our countdown. We do the, the top uh, cartoons that performed on Twitter based upon their gauges, and I put it in order, and I we have a go at it. And uh, that's, before we get to that, I just want to tell you about uh, three of my past books, and uh, I hope you uh, get around to taking, having taken a look at it. You can see them on my website. That's Richard's Books of Political Cartoons.com. No apostrophe S, yes, no spaces. Richard's Books of Political Cartoons.com. And uh, why this mask? Can't get used to wearing these masks. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so. Uh, here's the this is the first book I did, the greatest book of political cartoons on the Trump presidency, with a flashback to the Democrats and Republican candidates of 2016. So if you want to take a look back in time, you go back to 2016 presidential election, you'll see all the Democrat candidates, Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, and Republican candidates. And uh, you can take a look at this. Yeah. Here you go. Trip down memory lane. That and then you get the you get the whole you get, it covers up the whole year of uh, 2018, and you get, you recognize some of these characters, I'm sure of that. I'm just doing this randomly. That's in, in Mar-a-Lago with China's President Xi, President Trump, sharing a piece of chocolate cake, Mar-a-Lago. Here's John Kelly. Yeah, Supreme Court, here's Rudy. Rudy Giuliani. Here's uh, moving along to international affairs. I didn't know how, how prophetic this cartoon was going to be. I never knew. When I, this was way before the pandemic. I never knew. Uh, here he says, uh, "Make America Great Again." Tom McGee, 1942 to 2017. Make America Great Again. And he was saying here, "They're to trying to cheat you out of the future that you want." So. And here's uh, Steve Bannon out of Bar Mitzvah. Here's a former, his former uh, attorney general in a doghouse. Remember that? Okay. He wouldn't recuse himself from the investiga Russian investigation because he had some in so he, by peripheral involvement or whatever. So he felt the right thing to do was to excuse himself, recuse himself. And so President Trump, that was the end of him. And there he was in the doghouse. Okay. Here's that first press secretary. So 
that you get an idea. This is, this is just a little bit of history there. And this was this was the second book I did in 2019. I did a two-part book for the year. First edition. Of, this was the first edition of 2019. The sign is of the Declaration of Independence here. And there's Trump making some sort of a an ex talk about the signing of the independence. I don't want to go into the cartoon. Here's the, uh, somebody from the White House making a speech, the one, the one the unknown. Here's a, a Trump uh, the puppet show with the Secretary of State. And uh, that was um, dummy up. Uh, that was uh, the, the um, anyway, I, I don't want to get into it, but you, if you you uh, you can get the picture, you see you recognize some of these people here. Let's see, uh, here he's going after an attorney who who we got angry at, President Trump. Here's President Trump playing uh, chess with Albert Einstein. And he says, uh, where's my king, Donald? And before you went to the bathroom, you moved it under my right shoe. Checkmate. <laughs> Stuff like that. Uh, OK, here's uh, the president all dressed up with the queen. And there's, uh, well, I think you recognize, don't want to get into English politics. There's Walter Cronkite. And there's, he has, uh, there's President Putin in his office. Okay, this was this was my third book this for the second half of 2019. Right. Okay. There's a uh, Marco Rubio and. Uh, there's the uh, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. There's Lindsey Graham. All trying to ring Trump in. Trying. Uh, here's the Secretary of the Treasurer. With staying next to Trump. President Trump. Here's a, an outing that was a, 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 a park that was closed, and they, they went there, and it says here, uh, Trump administration welcomes you to Sabino Canyon National Park. Sorry, parking lot closed due to dams. Government shutdown. Enjoy your hiking. So they had to walk about three miles to get to the park. So, yeah. There's Rudy, President Trump, Rudy Giuliani, former mayor of New York City. Here's a 60 Minutes uh, thing. I'm your host, Rudy Giuliani. Welcome to 60, 60 Real Minutes. I'm going to see. Well, anyway, you, if you, you could, it's a there. All you have to do is, like I said, go to my website. Uh, Richard's Books of Political Cartoons dot com. No spaces and no apostrophe on the Richards. And that's Richard's Books of Political Cartoons dot com.
and uh, my 2020 book uh, should be coming out in early January. So here's just the, the, the front of it, the, the title page. You can see. Okay, so I can't, I'm giving you a preview now and showing you this week's cartoons because this is the concluding uh, pages of my 2020 book, which is all one book from 2020. I didn't, like I did in 2019, break it up into, into two books. This was all one year, the year 2020 of the Trump presidency. And this, this book will come to conclusion on January 1st, 2021. Uh, I'll be just doing my cartoons on Twitter for a few weeks. And then we start the 21 uh, best, uh, best uh, issues of the uh, of the uh, Biden presidency, and uh, we take it from there. Joe R. Biden presidency, 2021 issues. We start that on January 20th. Uh, maybe, uh, well, maybe 21st. We we'll give him a we we'll give him a day to rest up. So. Anyway, um, that's, where, that's where it's going, and uh, I'm going to miss uh, doing cartoons about President Trump. I have to tell you that's the truth, but I welcome uh, President-elect uh, Biden, and, uh, and I, I've said we all have to say our prayers for him to be successful and for this country to rise above the challenges we're now facing. So with that in mind, I'd like to get to the countdown. Okay, this, this is a countdown to number one, so these are the cartoons in order of their popularity. Okay. Here we have, uh, this is drawing Mickey Mouse, and this, the Mickey Mouse, I didn't bring this in for, for, for nonsensical, uh, this, this is, uh, this was, Mickey Mouse was brought up, and I'll, I'll show you, I'll read it to you in how, in what respect here. This, this bar with, President Trump, and here's a contentious and intense moment between President Donald Trump and his Attorney General William Barr, not cited by the President in, the most, in his most important speech of his presidency on baseless claims about voter fraud. Following Barr telling the Associated Press in an interview that the Justice Department had uncovered no evidence of widespread voter fraud that would change the election outcome, the President possibly citing a Republican member who said Mickey Mouse was registered to vote in Florida. Now, a Republican House member got up there on the floor and said, decreed that, some, that Mickey Mouse was, was registered to vote in Florida, trying to say, well, you got all these, this is all a bunch of bull, you know, this, this, this elected, to downgrade the election process, you know? So, so I then did, based upon that, I have here a, a, a kind of a, conversation, a hypothetical conversation with uh, President Trump and Barr, because he, he, uh, he is pissed off at the Attorney General. He's, he's got one foot in the door, one foot out of the Justice Department, is really where he's at right now. He's like in suspended animation. So here, here goes President Trump, and he's saying, you need to get off your ass and find the evidence of this massive voter fraud that has never been seen before. And here, here it goes, uh, Barr. Mr. President, that's the problem. It has never been seen. And then President Trump, he retorts, here's Mickey Mouse with an absentee ballot. See? So, based upon what this uh, person in the House, House Republican House member said that Mickey Mouse is registered to vote in Florida, so, Here's the evidence here of Mickey Mouse with an absentee ballot. Okay. Now this is a, um, here we go. Here's Henry Kissinger. And there's President Trump. And this is a flashback. I put this flashback in and brought it into my new book 
for one reason only, and that, because, that is because Henry Kitch, Kissinger and, and a few other, two other people, uh, and since then a, 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 per, a very uh, uh, experienced person also has resigned from the Defense Department. So I brought this in for that reason. Uh, as update, as a re, kind of a, a, a flashback, w appropriate flashback to what's happened today. A Trump-Henry Kissinger flashback from 2017, given Kissinger was among the three members of the Defense Policy Committee dismissed on Wednesday, and given all three purge members were considered long-term foreign policy experts in the, Trump in the Trump administration prior. So this, this was the flashback cartoon that I brought into the picture because uh, evidently uh, things were going okay with Kissinger and Trump brought him into the uh, White House for, for a meeting of uh, for some, for some uh, whether it was public relations or whether it was re a real consultation, he was there for a reason. So in any event, President Trump valued Kissinger at this point. He was a valued member. So that's the emphasis here. Okay, now, Trump meets, this is the flashback, Trump meets with, from 2017, Trump meets with former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger at White House, October 10th, 2017, and takes an, a news interview. Okay? Here we go. Obamacare is failing. Henry Kissinger here doesn't want a 116% cost increase in his health care insurance. So they were probably discussing health care, and President Trump wanted to do away with complete, 100% wipe out the Obamacare completely. Just, just wipe it off, just wipe it out. So he, uh, he, he might have in, in, uh, invited Henry Kissinger as a, as a senior citizen to kind of uh, supp to imply support by him being there and him talking about it. So it could have been, whatever it was, he was, he was there to promote President Trump in some way by President Trump. So here he is, Obamacare health, so here he is. Uh, Obamacare is failing, Henry Kissinger here doesn't want a 116% increase in his health insurance cost. And here is Henry Kissinger, and he's saying, to be able to take a good piss, I would pay 116 million, Mr. President. And here's President Trump retorting, my people at Trump University Hospital could get you pissing like Niagara Falls for only 115 million, Henry. You know, so. There's Henry Kissinger, and there's President Trump. Okay, that was that was a flashback to show how times have changed. Okay, now. Here's a, um, here we have this from last week. This was all over the place and it was pretty shocking to hear. And here's President Trump reacting to, to this uh, event, this uh, pro-Trump rally where uh, uh, a high profile lawyer, Lynn Wood, was speaking out in terms of uh, protesting the results of the of the election of, of the, in Georgia, and going after basically Brian Kemp, the governor, who was a Republican, no less. He's a he's a, he's a Republican, and and he 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 put this uh, lady uh, Leffler, he put her, he appointed her to fill a seat that was vacant, and he put her in there. So to show you where he is. On the, uh, you know, on the scale of, um, you know, he he appointed this lady Leffler, who's now running uh, against the Democrat. Um, I don't I don't get into Georgia politics, uh, so I, I don't. But her name is rings a bell because of how, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> you know. Anyway, so anyway, here here's here's the thing. What happened here? Now. Trump watching his ally, high-profile lawyer Lynn Wood, attacking Georgia's Republican Governor Brian Kemp in the wake of the president calling Kemp a moron and a nut job, amid Georgia saying its recount results show that Biden won 
as the president heads to Georgia for victory rally this Saturday, ahead of vital Senate runoffs in January. So the rally was called a victory rally. The question is, it was more, I think, I mean, from, from what I saw of that rally, it was more like a, a Trump victory rally than it was rallying for these two candidates, these, these, these two um, Republican candidates who are in a runoff, which will determine the, 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 how the Senate goes and how the country goes and how President-elect Biden is, is able to work and get his program passed, or not get his passed if, if the Republicans hold the Senate. So in all likelihood, or, or, or there'll be hopefully some sort of a, a mid-ground where they can come to an agreement on some things. So um, it's going to be very close, very close. So what, what, the, what the, the feeling is that President Trump, speaking against voting, he's talking against the, the, the voting uh, system of Georgia. People, a lot of Republicans are saying, why should we go out and, 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 put, and, and put our two cents into the voting system if, if it's not going to count? So there's a fear that this could drive a lot of voters uh, away from, from Republican voters away uh, by the Republicans. So I don't know, I don't know where these people are, uh, what, their, what their strategy is. It's hard to determine. Oh, the President Trump's strategy, if he's, I don't know. It's, it's I mean, to, to defeat your own voting system is it, when you have uh, your own, you need your own votes to, to get a, these people elected to take in, to hold the Senate. I mean, I, I, I don't see the logic in that. But anyway, I'm, I'm, like I always tell you folks, I just give you the joke and the facts and you decide. So here, here's what happened here. He, he got up on the microphone. He was wearing a red mega hat. And I said, he says, I want you to go. I want you to go to the governor's mansion and I want you to circle it and blow your horns, like the Indians used to circle the wagons, you know, before they attacked. Remember when you were a kid, you watched those uh, Western movies, you know, and you see, the, you see the wagons, they say circle the wagons to protect from the Indians, and the Indians would be coming around, you know. Uh, so circle the wagons, they used to say, to protect yourselves from the attack of the Indians, and they'd be fighting with their rifles, shh, and the, the horses, and you see all that business. So he's telling people now, to, I want you to circle them, um, the uh, governor's mansion we, and blow your horns until Brian Kemp comes out and orders a special session of the Georgia legislature and then he can resign and then as far as I'm concerned lock him up lock him up so here's, here's President Trump responding to that on TV he's watching this from the White House before before heading out to Georgia and he's saying F U C here it is F blank blank K bar. He couldn't even find the one rigged voting machine. You see, they were looking for the, the, the uh, Dominion voting machines. They say were rigged and this and that. He couldn't even find me one rigged voting machine. This great American could be a fantastic acting attorney general for my next four years after locking up all the governors of rigged states. So if you go ahead and you lock everybody up and you put everybody in the states in jail, the governors are and you put new governors in there who can appoint new electors, President Trump can be reelected with a new set of electors from a new set of governors from the old governors being in jail. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it would never happen, but it, it's, a, it's, a, it's just a, a joke to make you think, you know, to make you think in the context of what's happening here, saying to put the, go the lock up the governors for following through and checking the vote, and they ran the votes, and they counted the votes, and he's a Republican. And, and this, is, this is not just a Republican who sits there, you know, this is a guy who was really supporting President Trump at some point. So, I mean, I don't, again, it's hard to figure, but I give you the facts, and you decide. There it is. Okay. Now, here we have Jeopardy. Now, here's the story here, is Trump, President Trump's fantastic dream. Now, President Trump, this is real, this is, what he has appeared on, he, 
President Trump did appear on Jeopardy uh, before, and he, he liked the show. So I, I thought he, he could have a dream about hosting the show now uh, that uh, the former host unfortunately passed away and there's a vacancy. So Trump could fit right into that position if it went, you know, at, when President-elect Biden takes office on January 20th. So that would be a move right into jeopardy there. So Trump's fantastic dream, hosting his favorite game show, Jeopardy, with his loyal election campaign lawyer, Joe DiGenova, as co-host. Given DiGenova said on Monday that Chris Krebs, the former head of U.S. cybersecurity, who was fired by the president after he declared the 2020 election the most secure in history, should be taken out at dawn and shot. Okay? So he's saying this guy, Chris Krebs, who was there through a number of presidents, who's done a good job by all reliable sources, who, who kept the election, who said this was the most uh, fairest and secure le election in, in, in history. He, he worked at his job diligently. And because he said that, most secure in US history, he should be taken down and shot. And this deal was the exact words, you know? So I gave him, I, in this cartoon here, I gave him a shotgun and put him on Jeopardy as a co-host with President Trump. Okay, and here we have, and here we have the first contestant of the show coming up here. Here's the first contestant. You know, here he is, and we go. President Trump, welcome to Jeopardy. Your only category is famous president. So they only have one category in this show. This first show is famous presidents. And then, and then the contestant, he says here, here it goes. He says, I'll take it to get out of the, this triple Jeopardy because he sees the guy there with a gun and, and then with, with a shotgun, that's triple Jeopardy. So, okay, so here comes the question from, you know, on Jeopardy. They give you he they give you the answer and the, the contestant has to answer make answers in terms of who who they're talking about in the form of a question. So every every answer that the contestant makes is in the form of a question, and the statement is is that and then they have to meet the two. So the contestant again has to ask the question ask, make his answer in terms of a question. So he goes, he was the only. U.S. president who won election to a second term by a lot, by a lot, but was railroaded by a rigged election. The only president, and who, and, and he says, and he, his answer was, you know, the guy's petrified there. He, oh, he looks like he's petrified, don't he? You know? <laughs> he goes, who was P -P President Donald, Donald, Donald J. Trump? And then, and then we have here uh, the co-host, Joe DiGenova saying, before you, before, before you leave us, you want to give to the Trump Save America Fund, you know, because Trump started a Save America Fund to help him to fight this uh, election and to, to build funds to get him for the court battles and, and so forth. So he has a fund. So he's asking him for, if he wants to contribute before he checks out. That's triple jeopardy. Okay. Now, el numero uno de la semana, number one of the week. And you could guess who it went to. It went to Rudy Giuliani here. This was the number one. cartoon of the week here on Twitter. By the way, uh, if you want to look up my cartoons on Twitter, you go to Bronx Cartoonist at RJF Cartoons. That's where I'm from. I'm from the Bronx. So I grew up there and uh, worked hard, went to school, drove a cab, through college. Well, that was tough. Well, anyway, so this was, whoa, here we go.
Okay. Now, I want to cut through the verbiage here. Well, Trump personal attorney, Rujiani, claims victory on Twitter. Now, uh, I'd like to tell you in my own words here. Uh, Rudy Giuliani, what he, he basically um, claimed victory in, uh, in a judge ruling in a Atrim, Antrim County, Michigan, Georgia. A judge ruled that they have to take forensic, they are entitled to take forensic pictures of these Dominion, Dominion voting machines. Okay, now Rudy Giuliani saw that as immediate victory, a tremendous victory, because they're casting doubt on the machines, you see? Okay, if you want to look at a glass half empty or half full, I guess he's looking at it as half full. But the other half of the thing is that this, this was in response to a marijuana proposal to, I guess, uh, legalize marijuana there, a uh, proposal that shifted from a tie by one vote, it shifted from a tie to a victory for the uh, pro-marijuana movement, uh, for, for the so it passed. So the marijuana proposal passed after it was deadlocked, and in one vote they found in the machine, they cranked the machine, and it came out with one vote. And that one vote turned the tide in favor of the, the marijuana proposal. So there was no mention of the of any kind of uh, inequity in, in the, the voting uh, uh, procedure, anything like that. So here's uh, Giuliani's tweet in response to that, uh, uh, basically, judgment, which was for the, uh, the, the forensic examination of photographing of the Dominion voting machines based upon the, the marijuana vote being so by one vote, they, they scraped out one vote and they found, they found that one vote uh, apparently was uh, incorrect. So Giuliani's tweet reads, stay tuned for big news tomorrow. Sydney Powell, number one, and I have substantial evidence of fraud and I can confirm that we have dominion in our hands and are analyzing the logs, it will expose fraud to such extent it will be irrefutable, irrefutable, that means like undebatable, that real Donald Trump won in a landslide. Now, I don't see how one vote in marijuana, just by one marijuana vote, is going to, is going to say that President Trump won in a landslide by one, there was one vote, how could one vote create a landslide, you know? I don't see that, you know? but. We saw that in this tweet, okay? And then here he goes like this. He's trying, now he would, evidently he would get a question like that. So here's him basically responding to that question. How could one marijuana vote create a landslide for President Trump? One vote, not only that was not in the, involved in the election fraud, but it was for marijuana. So one marijuana vote got President Trump a landslide victory. I don't know, but anyway, here goes Rudy. This forensic examination order of Dominion voting machines by an Antrim County judge in Michigan still proves voter fraud. So he's gonna to cling to that voter fraud no matter what. You can be sure, right? Because the one vote that shifted the tie to passing the marijuana vote was from a pothead who voted for Joe Biden. So in other words, a guy was a pothead, you know, smoking all the time, and, and, he, and, and they, they took his, and, his, and he was voted as being against the, uh, the marijuana proposal. So they took a guy like that, and they put him against the proposal. That's really big time for what that means. Definitely a tr President Trump won by a landslide. So that's what, that's what the, the reasoning here is, you know. So anyway, folks, I want to thank you very much for watching my cartoon countdown of the week. And I tell you, you know, these masks are a pain in the neck. And I, every day I got, they break and they, you can't breathe, they fog your glasses, but you gotta go through it. 
You just have to because it's it's worth coming out at the other end and being around being around for for the years ahead, because better days are coming. You know, I mean, we've we, we've got the ammunition now to beat this thing, and it's like um, it's like surrendering to not wear a mask is 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 a, is a, is a, is a holding up a white flag, and it's a, of surrender. But you just say I can't I can't take it no more. You got me, you got me here. You know, so. It's a pain in the ass wearing these masks, and I hate them. You know, I tried everything. I tried, oh, and this is, this is about is the, the most comfortable one I could find, but I still don't like it. But we got to do it. We have to. And I wish you all the best of luck. Stay well. Stay healthy. And also, I want to say uh, that uh, I should I, I should say that now Rudy Giuliani, he's got he's got the virus, and I, we we all I'm sure wish him. A, a speedy recovery, and uh, in terms of, I, I I would not say this is the only one time I'm going to say that I hope Rudy Giuliani follows President Trump in getting well, as President Trump appears to have gotten in terms of beating the uh, the virus. So I hope that Rudy Giuliani follows in President Trump's footsteps in terms of getting well, getting well from this virus. And uh, uh, I'm sure our thoughts and prayers are out for Rudy. And even, you know, I mean, this is, we're all part of humanity and uh, we, we, we don't want to see people uh, suffering from this thing and we want, we wish people the best who have, a, who have this affliction. And that has to be, and that has to be with the, the uh, it should be the common denominator that, that unites us in that we wish even the people we, we don't agree with, we wish them a speedy recovery. Uh, that should be a common denominator, this, this virus um, that brings us together, uh, especially at this point. So anyway, I want to wish you all safe and, and good uh, days ahead. And uh, thank you for watching my Trump cartoon countdown. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye, folks.